What's up, everybody? John Eric Pola here with My MMA News, doing another interview. And today's guest fights on the Dana White Contender Series on August 11th, which will be the second episode in this fourth series. And before we start breaking down the fight, let's introduce our guest, Daniel Swain. Dan, how you doing, my man? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on, John. Well, once again, Dan, thanks so much for being here. And now, before we get into this fight on August 11th against TJ Laramie, let's first talk about the big news coming out of your family. You just became a father again. So why don't you go ahead and start there and tell us about the baby. Yeah, my wife uh, my wife delivered a little baby boy, our first biological boy, uh, on the 24th. Um, we d- adopted three boys uh, last November, so... Uh, that brings a total of four boys. And then I have a little two year old biological daughter as well. So five kids total, uh, right before this fight, (laughs) the fifth one got added. So, uh, we're excited. It's been crazy, kind of busy, lots of attention seeking here at the house from the kids. Uh, but you know, we're doing our best and everyone's healthy and happy. Well, congratulations on the addition to your family. And what's it like for the rest of your kids having the new little baby running around the house there? Uh, you know, it's, uh, I think it's a little annoying for my older boys cause I have a 12 year old, a 10 year old and a seven year old. Um, so I think for them, it's like, Oh, great. Another, another little one that runs around, uh, cause their little sister's kind of a terror. My two year old, she's, she's every bit as, uh, rambunctious as me. Uh, so she's just running around trying to wrestle and grapple everybody that she can find. Uh, so they're probably thinking, Oh, here comes another one of these little fiery redheaded babies. So I'm guessing based off of what you said that your daughter is probably going to be the next one in your family to follow in the footsteps and be an MMA fighter based on the way you said that she likes to uh, grapple and all that. Uh, yeah, she, I don't know if she's the most likely to be the next one. Cause I think my oldest son's pretty interested in it. He's 12 and he's always asking me to go wrestle in the garage and go uh, hit mitts with him and stuff like that. My 10 year old's actually a phenomenal athlete. He loves to do all sports and he loves hitting mitts with me as well. Uh, but my daughter, she is 100%, I think, wrestler DNA. She is, that's all she loves to do is just wrestle her puppy, her all of her stuffed animals, me. Um, she likes doing push-ups and sit-ups. She's just kind of a little bit of a beast. So I'm excited to see what she does in her future. And now, uh, just the last thing family-related before we start getting into your fight here. Um, I know the UFC, with uh, their whole COVID restrictions, they're very strict with their policy, and they're doing a good job with everything. But I want to know, uh, what's it like for you when you have to travel to Las Vegas for the Contender Series? Is your family able to come with you, or do they have to stay behind? It's only me and my coaches. So they're only allowing uh, two cornermen, and then that's it. It's not open to any crowd or anything like that. Um, so my family's staying here. Um, luckily I've got a pretty good support system cause I would hate to leave my wife with five kids right after a newborn's here. So, uh, my two year old's going to go with the grandparents and I got some friends taking some of my other boys for the week, uh, and taking them to do some fun stuff and hang out with them and make sure they're entertained. And then, uh, they actually don't get to watch the fights live just in case, because it is pretty brutal. Um, but after we know that I won, then they can watch the fights back and, uh, everything's good there. All right, now let's start getting into this whole entire uh, fight breakdown here for August 11th. Uh, first and foremost, we're going to start with yourself. This is a big sh- uh, big time for you to showcase your skills to the world. So why don't you go ahead and explain a little bit about yourself to everybody and what they can expect to see out of you on August 11th. Um, if you haven't watched me fight, uh, I have 20 professional victories, 17 of which are by finish. Like That's what I like to do. I like to go in and finish fights. Uh, most of my wins are by submission. Um, coming from a wrestling background, I get on top. I, I basically punch you and ground and pound you until you give up a submission. Um, I'm a black belt in jujitsu. So, uh, you know, I can submit the, I can submit guys from any position on the ground or on the feet. I've got some pretty crafty stuff there as well. So, um, if you're tuning in next Tuesday and you've never seen me fight before, don't blink because it can be over in a second. My last fight lasted 28 seconds and I didn't get touched and it was a highlight guillotine. So, um, you know, don't blink, keep your eyes peeled and watch for greatness because that's what I'm bringing on the 11th. Well, I can tell you right now, if you get a 28 second knockout, no doubt about it, you're or a 28 second submission, whatever it is, you're going to get into the UFC and get that contract if you could get a, a finish that fastly. And, and I want to ask you now, kind of like leading into this now, do you feel that you 
need to get a finish like that in order to get signed because something like that really sticks out to the boss or are you just somebody that's like you know what I know Dana White's going to be there but I have to just go in there and get the win no matter what I, what exactly are you feeling and do you feel any pressure that you need to make a good impression on the boss in order to get that UFC contract uh, well I mean I have a I have a victory by way of head kick to a rolling knee bar finish so like that and that was in the first round as well that's my game. I go out and I try to finish you and I try to make it entertaining and I try to make it as amazing as possible. Like if you give me a scrambly position, I'm going to try and find a way to finish you. Uh, so I fully expect that to be the case on the 11th and I fully expect to walk away with a contract. I think Dana White's going to realize that night that he probably should have signed me a while ago because I'm going to bring something to the table that not very many people will bring to the table and that's a finish uh, rate. I always look to finish the fights. Yeah, you know, I wanted to ask you too uh, about your your record and, and stuff like that because you I know you said that how you feel like the you should have been signed to the UFC a while ago. So like whenever I look at the contender series, I almost think like you know oh they're for you know up and coming fighters. And a lot of times you do see these guys with records that are I don't know seven and one, eight and zero, oh, you know maybe nine ten professional fights. But you you're twenty and nine as a professional. So do you feel that the UFC is a little bit uh, late here getting to the party? Um, you know what I think. Everything happens for a reason. Uh, I There was a long time in my career where I wasn't taking it very seriously, and it, it took a, a, my first two-loss skid, and like two losses in a row uh, skid to really figure that out. So once I made that change and became a, a real professional fighter, um, it's I've been four and one since then, and the only loss is by injury, uh, a leg break from a leg kick. Uh, so... Other than that, it's been all first round finishes and I've only gotten better mentally. I've only gotten better physically and technically I've never been better. So I'm just excited to get in there and show Dana White like, yeah, maybe you should have signed me a while ago, but I'm okay taking this route because I'm I'm here now and I'm ready to make a statement. And now let's talk about TJ. You know, that's obviously who you're fighting. When you were scouting him and, and starting to break things down as he got prepared for this fight, what do you see in TJ as an opponent? I mean, TJ, he's pretty young. He's only 22 years old, but he's got quite a few fights for that young. Um, he's he's fought a lot of guys, but I don't know if he's fought the caliber of guys that I've fought or if he's ever fought, if he's ever fought anyone like me. Uh, that's something I've been saying a lot this camp is like he's never fought anyone like me. So uh, I want to go out there and show him that right away and let him know that he's never had this type of fight. He's never fought anyone with the experience that I have. Um, he's got good cardio and he's got pretty good striking. But his ground game is nowhere near mine, and his wrestling is nowhere near mine. And I think he thinks that his striking is his striking is way above mine. But I think he's going to be pretty surprised come the eleventh when we start mixing it up a little bit. And uh, I fully intend on him because he was a wrestler to begin with who developed striking, like a lot of wrestlers do. I fully uh, think that I can go out there and start hitting him and frustrating him into a bad shot, and that's going to be the beginning of the end for him. So what do you think then? Is this going to be a, a striking affair then? Or do you think that you guys are going to go out there and showcase your, your grappling and wrestling skills in there as well? Um, with me, you never know, man. Uh, it, wrestling's pretty natural for me. So like, we'll, we'll start getting in the mix of things and I'm going to hit a takedown. right? If you get too close to me, then I'm going to take you down. And there's no way he can stop my takedowns. He might be able to stop one. He might be able to stop two. But he's not going to stop three, four, or five. I'm going to keep coming. Uh, especially if he does defend one, then that's just going to make me want to get it even more. Uh, but he's just not going to be able to hang with my wrestling. So I think I'll be peppering him on the feet. And uh, I mean, it'll be a good battle. He's got good striking for sure. So it's going to be battling. Um, I'm going to look to change levels whenever I need to. And I think that's going to open up my striking a lot as well. Uh, but I would expect to see him on his back at least a few times in this first round. And now, just the last thing here now before I let you get uh, get running. I know you have a lot to do. You, you have uh, obviously a big fight coming up next week. I know that you're in the middle of preparing for that. I don't want to take too much more of your time, but I have to ask you about your nickname, Agent Orange. I'm guessing that has to do with the orange hair and the orange beard and all that. Yeah, so uh, I was I had, had some amateur fights, and I went back up to my college wrestling team up at Simon Fraser University in Canada. And I was working out with them, and we went and hit the sauna afterwards. And my old coach, Justin Abdu, he uh, was like, hey, what's your nickname going to be since you're fighting now? And uh, I was like, I don't really have a nickname. My favorite fighter was Matt Hughes, so I didn't really want uh, a nickname like Matt Hughes because he didn't have a nickname. And he was like, ah, you need a nickname. And he was like, 
yeah, Agent Orange sounds pretty good. It's clever, and you got orange hair, and it messed a lot of people up. And I said, yeah, it did. It, I didn't. I wasn't sure about it. Like I said, I didn't want it. But all my buddies were like, that's it, dude. You got to go with that. So uh, they all started tagging me in posts online uh, back in the day. So it stuck. <laughs> and I, I guess I just went with it. Yeah, well, you know, where I was going with this whole entire uh, orange thing was, I, I have to ask you, I'm sure you're familiar with South Park. Have you ever seen the Gingers episode of South Park with all the ginger kids running around? Yeah, I remember watching the Ginger episode. That, like, I watched it weekly. Like, when it came out, I watched it live. And I was like, dang it, my life is going to change forever now. My life will not be the same as a redhead after this episode. And like instant, like I remember walking, I was in high school still. I remember walking into school the next morning and the, and like the first thing, Ginger, first thing, like, I'm like, I got here early hoping to miss this. Like, why is this, is this really happening? But yeah, dude, it's been something I've lived with. Uh, I've been, I make, I like to have fun with it I, on my Facebook fan page or athlete page. It, uh, it says I'm a ginger looking to injure. Um, in other interviews, like pre-fight promo videos, I said he's gonna like I'm gonna ginger snap this guy. Uh, you know what I mean? I like to play into the ginger thing. I'm proud to be a ginger. My little baby girls got red hair. My wife has red hair. Um, one of my adopted sons dyed his hair red to try and look more like me. So we're a very ginger pro here uh, at this household. And my little baby boy who was just born has ginger hair as well. Um, so we got a clan of ginger turtles or ginger turtles. <laughs> Well, I'm happy that you saw that, and it's funny because I, I can relate to because I remember, in, in, not, not that I'm ginger, obviously, but I remember when that episode came out, that was the big thing, anyone with red hair or orange hair, they were a ginger, we used to, you know, bust their balls a lot while we were in school there, but um, I, I just have to ask one last thing on that South Park episode, do ginger people have souls, can you answer that, do ginger people have souls? Yeah, they definitely have souls. They definitely have souls. My, my, little, ch- my little children have souls, for sure. <laughs> we have souls. Awesome, man. Well, hey, finally, one last thing then. Go ahead, plug your social media and your sponsors and um, anything else like that. Floor is yours. Yeah, it's uh, Daniel Swain MMA on Twitter and Facebook and then Swain underscore MMA on Instagram. Um, Warrior Camp MMA is my gym in Spokane, Washington. They're the best. Rose Alfonso, Pablo Alfonso, they've been taking care of me, making sure we got everything we need. Uh, Jason House, uh, Iridium Sports Agency for getting me this opportunity. Uh, Since I signed with them, I've been uh, nothing but great things have been happening for me. So I want to thank them a lot. My training partners, Josh Reddinghouse, Jake Lindell, uh, moneymaker, Mike Sear. Uh, you guys have been phenomenal to have in camp. And then, uh, my other coaches, Vincent peak, Joel Thomas, Richie Whitson, without them, I wouldn't be where I'm at either. Uh, and then Gardner life CBD oil. Uh, they have this inflammatory response CBD oil. That is the bomb. You guys got to check it out. Uh, Gardner life CBD oil. It's the best. All right, Dan, thanks so much for being with us here. I really appreciate the time and best of luck to you on August 11th. Thank you very much.